Hey there, Monsties. <laughs> hey, Monsties. Yeah. <laughs> How did you know what I was going to say? <laughs> uh, I've seen a couple of your videos. You've been a part say. of them, yeah. yeah. So, yeah, it's Giant Monsties, Big Monsties. We just saw Godzilla X Kong, Godzilla against Kong, Godzilla with Kong, something. I think it's their Twitter account now, their Xer. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Godzilla Godzilla X, yeah, Kong, yeah. The New Empire, I believe, right? Yeah, that's the, the yep, New Empire. Yes. Um, I suppose that is a new empire. I mean, they really didn't do anything with it. They just set the ground for the new empire, I guess, in the, in the future sequel. True. This is the uh, spoiler review, if you haven't noticed already. Um, so, yeah, what, since you're the guest on my channel here, uh, what is your overall thoughts in Honest? I liked it. It was all over the place. It was kind of chaotic. Uh, the fight scenes were fun. Um, it wasn't too serious. There was a lot of personality that was thrown into the, uh, the creatures and the characters. Uh, and it seemed like there's a lot of stuff that OG um, Godzilla fans would enjoy. There's some references, etc. So I had a good time with it. Yeah, yeah uh, actually, tons of references. A lot of um, big references and also some minor ones. Do you remember there was a scene where somebody was talking about an online troll and he was just like, oh, that oh, Ghidorah yeah. 64 guy right. or whatever? 1964 is whenever Ghidorah first appeared in a movie. Oh, wow. That's so really Ghidorah 64, yeah. Um, there was also, I feel like, some missed opportunities for references. Um, <laughs> I'll come back to my thoughts in a minute, but one of the craziest moments, and I, I feel like there's a few moments where I, I kind of just called what was going to happen. Like, I did not see any spoilers ahead of time. I just knew the direction of Hollywood and how they handle this kind of stuff, that they were going to go more extreme and pay off um, homages to some of the cheesiest moments in Godzilla history mm, yeah. and so uh, but I feel like one of the things that they missed was they finally set up this moment where once again this is the spoiler review where they go completely anti-gravity and they're all, all the kaiju are just floating in the middle of a battle and I looked at you and I was just like Godzilla's gonna fly <laughs> Why didn't they do that? Why didn't he just like light up his breath, have him fly across the <laughs> the cave yeah. that they were in, and that was that one moment? But instead, I mean, he kind of did fly regardless. He was bouncing off of things. And... Right, right. It, it was a uh, it was a missed opportunity in a way, but it was still kind of fun because that that's that chaotic scene that I was talking about. Because like you know, one person was fighting the other person, they out of nowhere like it was like watching a wrestling match where there's eight people and suddenly somebody has a chair and somebody else is being choked out. It was a lot of fun, but. Yeah, I, I would be cool to see like a flying moment because that, at that point it could be accepted without being too ridiculous. Yeah, it, a part of me, it, okay, I've never been so disappointed in something, but also enjoyed something <laughs> so much at the same time. <laughs> like, I grew up, you know, uh, before like a lot of the serious Godzilla movies from the '90s came out. Well, serious. I mean, they're so cheesy to some extent, but before they came over here to the United States. I grew up on the Showa era Godzilla films, which were a lot cheesier, where Godzilla did things like fly. And so a part of me I, loves the cheesy stuff, but I love the serious stuff more. But I still want to see that stuff. So to actually see the MonsterVerse set this up where they can go completely insane, not have to worry about any logic, just do whatever they want. Because as you see, the Japanese uh, version of Godzilla, the, the Toho Studios version is a lot more serious. Godzilla Minus One was a lot more serious. Uh, Shin Godzilla was a lot more serious. They don't want to necessarily intentionally milk out their franchise and go the silly route. And so if you want something silly, this is like your only chance to get that. With that being said, it's still... I, I must have facepalmed like 10 times during this movie. Like, I was just... I, I Sometimes I laughed at the ridiculousness, and then sometimes I just I couldn't believe that I'm like... This is tarnishing Godzilla's legacy, I feel like. Give us an example. The, the whole way. <laughs> a example. A, a example. example, example yeah. Alright, just limiting myself to one and not mentioning Pick the... one out of a hundred, come on. Yeah, and not mentioning the whole anti-gravity scene that we just talked about. Well, the one guy perfectly explained it. You know, it was perfectly logical. I'm being sarcastic. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> I, I mean... It, it, it's not even necessarily just the insane stuff. Um, it, it's also just the tone of it too. From the very opening shot, it was very similar to how Godzilla vs. Kong started with that really out of place, like 70s or 80s pop music playing in the beginning and stuff. Older than that. I actually like that, but yeah, yeah. No, it was I, cool. 
It's a nice you stuff. think that was a, that was a cool moment in that movie for that scene, just to open it up like that? Because I feel like at the end of the day, you're still selling Godzilla and Kong as a terrifying threat, even if it's child friendly mm-hmm. and action oriented. But to open up, which is right off the bat, being like, "Hey, here's some really upbeat music and everything like that," uh, instead of rather something sci-fi or something dramatic for their. Like, save that for later on when things get really chaotic or whatever. But right off the bat, they're like, no, 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 expect this to be silly. I didn't get any silliness from it. I sort of got a sense of wonder because they were showing you this, uh, you know, beautiful landscape with all these rivers converging and these mountains and strange creatures, you know? They were kind of, like, giving you a taste of the wonderment of the world before adding any of the danger or, you know, any of the plot. But, but that's the that's the thing, though. I was feeling the wonderment right off the bat. I was it's like, oh, this is great. And then the music was just like, oh, no, this is Hollywood. And I was just like... Oh, okay. It, it took me out of the moment so much. And I don't know. It, I know a lot of Hollywood studios do that stuff. Like, they put really out of touch. Not out of touch, but out of place pop music in there. I think Marvel Studios started that trend uh, over a decade ago at this point. But I mean, that's a little, that's a little bit different video. <laughs> okay, all right. I, I mean, I'm sure people have been doing that. Sure. But, I mean, to put them in as far as like a picture, places. You mean? Okay. And out of touch moments or what? I'm trying. I'm trying. I don't know if that's coming across clearly, but no, I think I get what you're saying. But there is a lot that I love about this movie. Um, j- just the idea of connecting that Mothra's tribe and hmm. the Ewa. Sp- yeah, the Ewa. Yeah. Yes. Not, not not the Ewok from Star Wars. True. But, right. True. Very different. The Ewok. They do not cook humans. And the Skull Island tribe, being like the same um, civilization, I right. love that because obviously King Kong has always been a completely different studio, and they rarely ever cross over with Godzilla. But as a kid growing up, I always kind of felt like Mothra belonged in some kind of connection with King Kong. And actually start to tie those loose ends together for this universe. It, it it was like a connecting piece that's been missing for so many years, in my opinion, as a Godzilla fan. Yeah, that was interesting. And <clears throat> if you notice, the the portals that were like owned by the Iwa tribe, they went to other places that pyramids. So it was kind of mm-hmm. tying into that stuff that the one guy was talking about in the last one about all the connected tribes. So, it, it you know, I think they were trying to maybe lead up to something later, maybe a bigger story for the Iwa. Mm-hmm. You know, maybe they built all these monuments. I don't know they were going with it, but it seemed like that was hinting at it to me. Because, I mean, they already tackled uh, Hollow Earth, so why not tackle ancient astronaut theory? Because they kind of hinted at that, too. So you know, They, they kind of laughed at <laughs> that, yeah. And, and then... I, but you're talking about, like, the, the portals that open up everywhere. And that's another thing. I was like... I, I think I laughed, and I... <laughs> It was fun, but I don't know if I could enjoy it. But just, just the way like Godzilla and Kong were just like shooting through those portals and stuff, like shooting stars, yeah, like missiles, <laughs> like the monster that ate a star. Oh yeah, he's the monster that ate a star. <laughs> that, that that should have been a really cool line. Godzilla's new new nickname is the monster that ate a star. I guess the nu- the nuclear the brain, radiation, yeah. yeah, is the star. But just the way it was delivered, it was. It didn't come off right. It was just like, ah, uh, he's the monster who ate a star. It was just, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the with the prophecies, right? Yeah, 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 and yeah. I don't know if it was the acting or just the writing or a combination, but there was a lot of things that you know. I'm the whole wonder of you know going down into like i guess the crystal realm or whatever which was like a whole realm beneath the hollow earth it was hollow earth hollow earth if i (laughs) right it was the hole within the hole right right (laughs) (laughs) let's keep it it middle earth and the center earth so (laughs) right no hobbits right but the thing is is like when they went into like this crystal palace pretty much uh I, i was really feeling the awe once again but it was just like I, I like the fact that the tribe didn't even need to speak. They they could just easily... Because the dialogue was very simple. They could have just looked at each other, pointed, and we would, as an audience, know what was being said. But they still had to cut back to, like, some... Um, one of the comedy relief characters, make a joke. It pulls you out of the moment. And mm-hmm. I know human characters have never been something special in the Godzilla universe. I mean, in Godzilla Minus One, they did a pretty good job. But throughout Godzilla's history, it's usually just... Very uh, bland human characters, but at least they kind of fit the moment. They didn't take you out of the moment with their inappropriate, not inappropriate, but out of place jokes. It was just, yeah. 
I don't know. It, it doesn't. I, I've said this before. Like whenever Godzilla's on screen, you should kind of feel his awe and presence. You shouldn't be stopping and cutting back to humans to crack jokes or something like that in a moment or to translate what's going on. But that's another how much moment right there where uh, Mothra spoke to Godzilla and Kong and got them on that's the same about. side, yeah. which is actually cool because that scene where they're all roaring next to the pyramid, mm -hmm. they showed that on TV, but they had digitally erased Mothra to not show her there in that scene. It was just Godzilla and Kong mm -hmm. standing next to each other roaring. Yelling at each other. Right, yeah. But um, that, that is also a tribute. In one of the older Godzilla movies, Mothra did help uh, Godzilla and Rodan communicate with each other to team up against King Ghidorah. Uh -huh. So that, that's also an homage right there. Um, what did you think of the actual kaiju design? Uh, like, uh, other than Godzilla and Kong, and a brief cameo of a couple other minor background uh, monsters, like the flying snakes, um, and the oh, little... Like the Hydra thing that uh, Kong fought. But like, are you talking about the... Uh, well, the, the Hydra the was ice new. dinosaur? But, well, th that thing's called... Sh you remember the Shimu? name? Not, sh not Shamu. Not like the killer whale from... Or Shamwow. Or Shamwow, yeah. It's not Shamwow. Uh, is Shimu, yeah. Okay. It's an all new character. The Scar King was also an all all new character. When I saw the toys show up in stores, I was not very impressed with their design. I feel like Hollywood does not do a good job of designing monsters. But maybe I just I like all the Toho monsters because I grew up with those ones. They're definitely more ingrained. And but once I actually saw the Scar King in play, I kind of liked him just as just like a rival ape. Yeah. Um, I thought he was actually going to be bigger than that or whatever, but no, he was about the same size. Shimu was okay. I, I wasn't too impressed, or I didn't hate it either way. But... A little bland. It was all like one color, so didn't seem to have a lot of personality. So uh, who knows if they'll do anything with that? Do you like how uh, the the bad apes were orangutans and the good apes were mostly gorillas? Did you notice that? It seemed like the gorillas had been enslaved by the orangutans. I wonder if that yeah. was going to go somewhere. Maybe they cut it, or it doesn't matter. I don't know. It does seem like a lot of stuff might have been left on the cutting room floor. Or just lore, something you had to read about in a book. Or maybe it was in one of the TV shows, and we just don't know about it. Yeah, we have yet to actually see the uh, Monarch TV series. But th that's the thing, though, is people were actually, like, praising the TV show in the reviews for Monarch, um, season one at least, saying that the human characters were actually quite tolerable. Mm. And it seemed like they were going to head in a better direction, but it seems like whoever did... The uh, TV show what must have been a different producer or whatever behind that than the movies, because the movies is right back down to the dumbed-down humans. <laughs> That's true, but maybe it's the difference in the format uh, with a TV show. I don't know if it's yeah, 22 to, or 45-minute segments, but you don't Flesh need out that. the characters more. You have more time to flesh out the characters, and you don't maybe need that, or you don't feel the need for comedic relief during a two-hour flick where maybe things are getting too serious. Now, I agree with you. I thought the humor maybe was a little bit misplaced sometimes. Sometimes it was funny. Sometimes it was nice. But mostly that included whenever, like, one of the monsters made a facial expression. Because you kind of, you knew what they were saying, you know? <laughs> like, when they were frustrated or this or that. Yeah, for sure. Um, a lot of people were complaining about Godzilla being a background character to this, which he was kind of a background character in Godzilla vs. Kong also. Yeah. Kong definitely has a lot more human expressions. Um, Toho doesn't really like the idea of Godzilla having human expressions, so th that's why they have to kind of put him in a backseat. But mm, that's fair. I feel like they checked in with him enough to, you know, give him a presence and everything, and like, oh, this is what he's up to. But it oh, was yeah. a little too quick, though. While he was not the main character, he was busy the whole movie. I mean, he was going from monster to monster, fighting them, slaying them, charging up, and becoming more powerful. What? He even transformed towards the end of the movie for that fight. But yeah, true, true. But one thing I noticed, though, is, like, even during all this stuff, like, you see Godzilla rampaging and blowing things up, but you're not on the human level for that, so you don't feel any connection. It's just completely hollow. He's just plowing through. You don't actually feel a threat of, oh, no, Godzilla's coming. They just say, Godzilla's coming, and then we cut to a whole different planet, uh, city, and he's just ripping through stuff, and you can kind of see people getting tossed aside and killed, but yeah. you don't feel the dread. It's just... Do you feel like that's something they did better in the past couple of movies? Because I remember a couple of scenes, especially like <clears throat> in the last movie, and I'll be brief because this is what the movie we just seen, where Mecha Godzilla and Godzilla are charging at each other. It takes a brief shot of like civilians on the ground seeing the monsters run over top of them. 
and stomp on stuff. And even further back, like in uh, the, the Godzilla reboot, 2014, 2015, whatever it was, uh, at the airport scene, like you saw the stomping right beside the humans as they were trying to run away. So maybe they got away from that for some reason? Are yeah. They... No, 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 no. You have a point with the 2014 version for sure. At the whole airport scene, <laughs> right? <laughs> or it, it wasn't even Godzilla, but um, well, there was a Godzilla at the airport scene. But right. prior to that, when they're riding that um, that trip, that train rail mm -hmm. thing, mm -hmm. and that, uh, the Muto is there ripping yeah. up things, even then you feel like, oh feel no, dangerous. you're stuck heading towards it. Right. Um, Godzilla vs. Kong didn't really do that from a human perspective as much, but they did kind of do that with Kong being on the ship in Godzilla vs. Kong, where you're like, oh, Godzilla's out there in the water, and he's starting to approach and yeah. stuff. And there's some of that suspense. Uh, but it's, it's nothing quite like, for example, Godzilla minus one, where you're being chased on a little boat with Godzilla's <laughs> head coming right at you. But, I, I don't know. So, yeah, it doesn't quite cover all that. So one thing I, I'm not sure exactly what's going to happen for the future of the MonsterVerse is you can see that they keep inventing these new monsters like the Scar King and uh, Shimu and all these other minor characters. They're doing that because they don't want to buy the rights to more Godzilla characters yet. So they're trying to milk it out. And like they brought back Mothra, which is cool. And they made reference to Mechagodzilla because I guess they still have the license to use Mechagodzilla. But they're not elaborate they're not expanding the toho godzilla library at all they're just doing a cheaper way where they can just invent their own and pay artists a lot less to design new but i do wonder like whenever the rights expire and godzilla goes back to toho fully and kong goes to universal i believe i believe so um who's going to get rights to all these new kaiju that they make do they go back to godzilla's universe um, does Toho just automatically inherit anything that they put in, well, besides King Kong? Or does Universal get them? Or does Warner Brothers get stuck with their own um, C-tier list of kaiju that they invented for this? I mean, we don't have the contract in front of us. I assume Warner Brothers would keep it since they created it. It's their intellectual property. I wonder if they're planning on trying to build up successful stories with these other kaiju and eventually let the rights to Godzilla expire if they don't want to renew them or whatever and just like try to do their own universe this way. But I can't quite see that working yet because honestly not many of the original kaiju are actually memorable. Um, and they would have to do something with Godzilla first because Godzilla's main purpose is destroying every character they come up with. So, <laughs> Well, they did say, I think they said a long time ago, their grand finale plans or at least originally where this may have changed, was to do a remake of the movie Destroy All Monsters, which was a 1960s movie, which had Toho take all their giant monsters and team them up together. Really? And there was like 12 different monsters on screen fighting all at once. Oh, wow. And back then that was impressive, too, because you had like 12 different people in rubber costumes with strings attached oh, okay. to them, and they're all like bashing at <laughs> each other, you know? And so they want to do that here, <laughs> but awesome. here they only had, well, including the little... Baby, I think they call it Suko or something like that, the baby uh, monkey. Including that one, they have six monsters in that one fight with Mothra in, in the Hollow Earth. And even then, that was starting to get a little chaotic. Yeah, and for a brief time during that fight, they still had some of the henchmen who were trying to fight as well and getting knocked out of the scene. So, yeah. Mm -hmm. even, you're right, even with six people, it was it was awesome, but chaotic. I saw a lot of people complaining online about... Um, You know what? Scratch that thought. I don't remember what people were complaining about online. Who knows? <laughs> Who cares? We okay. did score this Check awesome this uh, Cinemark Godzilla X Kong real. Oh, it's supposed to be for 3D. That's why we didn't originally get the poster. We had to ask. It says real 3D right down there. Oh. We didn't see it in 3D, but we got one of these 3D posters. It's not the poster's not in 3D, but yeah. Uh, so that's probably why that guy was like hesitant to give us one in the beginning. He just, oh no, he just wasn't aware of it. Uh, right, right. To be fair, it did say on the website that they were giving it on a Friday, but now that like Thursday is the new Friday, as soon as it comes to, uh, as far as it comes to, rather. Uh, yeah, he's probably gonna, releases. He's probably gonna get fired for giving them out early. <laughs> um, Hopefully not, but we should probably go back and apologize. So you brought up a point about the portals and when is it? When is it a portal and when is it just a tunnel? Yeah, because uh, I, I noticed, especially when rewatching the, the Godzilla, Godzilla versus Kong, Kong uh, when Godzilla blows the hole to the center of the Earth, like it creates a tunnel that you don't need a portal in that uh, King Kong climbs up to to get to the fight in Hong Kong. But uh, other times you use a portal. It, it just sort of is strange. Is it like a direct connection? Is it a physical connection? I, I didn't. I don't. I get. I get why. Like 
structurally you need the portals to get there just because it's a movie you shut your brain off but like is it actually physically connected is it a portal it just sort of it created more questions for me that aren't necessarily important but sort of interesting to the structure of uh the planet that they created during the, the story yeah and, and so there is that moment where like you know when they come up to the surface if, if it's gravity reversing itself kind of like they say like a portal because if you get down into the hollow earth you got like mountains on the top and on the bottom yes and so they kind of like have like they even showed this one part where kong was going back up to the surface and he kind of like climbs up and there's trees the whole way up along the cave to the top so it's kind of like almost like a tunnel with trees on all angles. It's like that scene from Inception, up in Inception, where they, they can walk on the ceiling because it yeah. connects on the wall. Right, yeah. yeah. But so gravity kind of goes both ways. But whenever Godzilla and Kong come down into the hollow earth, they get launched in like a rocket. But when they come up to the earth, they kind of take their time crawling out. Right, they have to fight but gravity. Gravity's, yeah, but shouldn't they have to fight gravity coming in since they're coming in through a side that also has trees coming up? So gravity's facing the other way. See, that's the thing. I don't know how the portals work. Yeah, I'm. I'm, I'm saying you have yeah. a good point. Yeah, like, like I understand you have to dis, uh, suspend your disbelief, but it Absolutely. really feels like they didn't <laughs> think out any logic at all for this. Yeah, I think it was just a way to get there. But um, and when they come through the portals, they seem to come out with such an extraordinary amount of speed, as you mentioned. Yeah, and they 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 kind of blow past the gravity that should have slowed them down, hitting the other side. So it is kind of curious how it works. Yeah, it's kind of like the Marvel movies when Thor rides the, uh, what do you call it, the Rainbow Bridge or whatever. I don't know, you, you don't know, watch too much superhero stuff, but whenever he just shoots through outer space super fast on a light beam, pretty much, that's pretty much how they ejected here into the Hollow Earth. But Well, well as a Marvel fan, do you think that the Monster Monsterverse is uh, taking some inspiration from? Definitely the humor and stuff. I, I think most a lot of Hollywood is inspired by like Marvel humor right now. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Um, it's not just the humor either, but too, yeah, the, the pacing and how things are rapidly cut. Um, oh yeah, the pacing was fast. I noticed that. It was just like, if you had ADHD, you were having a great time because it's like scene, 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 scene. You didn't have to stop and think. Yeah, and that kind of ties into what I was trying to allude to. I don't know if, uh, if I finished that thought earlier about how, yeah, yeah, like, and the Toho Studios version of Godzilla, yeah, you soak in the moment of Godzilla being a threat coming to you, and they kind of did that with this movie a little bit, too. Whenever Godzilla is waking up from Italy and stuff, they kind of show some helicopter scene footage of him, like, walking slowly back out to the ocean, which is cool, but there's no build-up to it. It's just like, hey, there he is walking, cut to that, and then they, they did do some other hyper stuff once he evolved, like, was, no, he wasn't even evolved yet. I think he would, even whenever he was in his chubbier form, he was still running faster than he ever had before. Mm -hmm. And there was one part where he started to almost do a jump kick, but they kind of framed it in a certain way where it would kind of look like he was just leaping a little bit. And he did like a long jump. Yeah. That's what you're talking about. One, one other really big point. Um, it, it's not a big plot point. It's just really lazy writing, I think, at my point. And you said maybe it was just an exposition dump, which is still lazy writing, is... Um, the, the two main characters, I believe, are, uh... Who are the main characters? Uh, the little Iwa, Iwa girl. Okay. Um, and her mm -hmm. adopted mother. Yeah. Or, oh, those are the main characters. Her adopted mother. Okay. I, I think they're the main characters. Point is, though, is... <laughs> right? Yeah. I, I, I think they met in the last movie, Godzilla versus Kong. They were on that ship together with them, and she was, like, you know, doing sign language with Kong or whatever. Yes. Point is, though, is, like, they've been together for several years now, and yet they go back to her house at one point, and she's watching a documentary on her own daughter to, like, study yeah. her history and stuff. I'm like, well, what does the documentary know about your daughter that you don't know about your own daughter? Right. And it was... It, it was and it seemed like poor storytelling, but it was probably to tell us that. Like, but, but the thing is, yeah. though, is... But the thing is, though, is they... In the scene before that, they literally explained her history. She explained it to somebody else... Then they cut to this scene, and so the exposition dub was really just rehashing stuff that we had just heard in the previous scene. Yeah, maybe it was just poor editing, I don't know, but that's a good point. There it goes. So, what does this leave for the MonsterVerse? Um, like I said, they can definitely always get new characters and stuff, but at this point, I'm afraid that they've really isolated the general public. Other than people bringing their kids to see this movie, or hardcore Godzilla fans, people aren't really going to come to see this. Um, I feel like they started out strong with Godzilla 2014, but they knew it was too slow. And so they tried to make, could you tell like how slow Godzilla 2014 was compared to Godzilla versus Kong? 
as far as the story was slow, and you mean Godzilla being slow, like everything was a little bit slower paced and took its time. The story and the pacing, yes. Yeah, yeah, it definitely was. It was, it was something that was uh, less chaotic and, and very straightforward and easy to understand. It was grounded. Maybe that's what it was. Right. And so I, I feel like they they kind of took the correct lesson. They realized they needed more Godzilla in their footage, in their films. But instead of balancing that out with a good script, they decided to go for a quick fix and just go completely like almost like, oh, what do you want? Like some kind of like a steroid juice or whatever for this. So it's just like to pump in the audiences, get people excited. And people thought, oh, Godzilla versus Kong, that will draw in the audience, you know? And it did. But it also demonstrated to the general audience who isn't Godzilla fans that, hey, this universe is full of sloppy material. It's just wild fun. And a lot of people don't want to come back for that unless, like, their family's dragging along for them, dragging them along to come see it. And so now here with Godzilla X Kong, like I said, they cranked it up to 11, and it's just reaffirming to the general public that, hey, this Hollywood stuff, you know, I feel like a lot of people might stumble into this movie just because they heard the good things about Godzilla Minus One and think, oh, this is somehow connected to the people who aren't in touch with this stuff, you know? And so they're coming to see this, and they're going to be like, yeah, this is exactly what I thought it would be. It's terrible, you know? Um, from a Godzilla fan point, yeah, you, you can. there's a lot to like about it, but it will leave you craving more. I don't know how much replay value you're going to get out of this. People might like it in the moment, but by the end of the year, will people will still be talking about it? I highly doubt it. Um, and, yeah, the, the pull of audience that this can um, cash in on is getting smaller and smaller and you can only go so crazy before you just turn off your audiences and that that's my biggest concern about this well i mean then like every other time it'll just wait a couple years and reboot and you'll have a different tone and a different director i, I would it's like a, a natural reboot. life yes. cycle it seems oh they, i mean how many times has godzilla been rebooted and it oh, keeps coming many back, times you know? but i mean to be fair well no no you got a good point because yes <laughs> Because when they first retired Godzilla back in the late seventies, they brought him back. I think nine years after that, which it's so hard to like imagine a nine year we're wait. Taking, yeah. We're taking Godzilla to the retirement home for nine we'll years. We'll visit him on the weekends. <laughs> and then every now and then, like it seems like when they reboot him, like the wait time between reboots gets smaller and smaller. And so, I don't. Yeah, you don't want to wait too long, I guess, because then you risk people forgetting what Godzilla is like because people seem to have really short, short uh, attention spans nowadays um, including me <laughs> I've had to pause this video multiple times just to remember like what was my thought I was going to say next but um, at the same time you don't want to oversaturate the market and right now you have Godzilla X Kong is out right now um, Godzilla Minus One just came out a couple months ago and uh, the Godzilla TV show which came out like less than half a month between actually it was going on at the same time as that mm, and yeah. so you have three different qualities of godzilla aren't they all telling different kind of stories though because i don't i'm not a native to the superhero universe but i'm aware that there's different versions of the superhero stories going on all the time you mm -hmm. have the blockbusters you have the cartoons that are meant for like five-year-olds then the cartoons that are meant for teenagers and they're all happening at the same time yeah it, it, and then they reboot like 10 years later it's just like it's an ecosystem uh, I get your concern, though. You definitely don't want it to, like... Maybe we are at the point where... Right be over. Yeah. No, 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 no. I, I but I don't think it will be. You know, I think it'll just come back. It'll be special again. Hopefully, yeah. Yeah, Hopefully. I, that's I, true. I can see that, yeah. And, and, yeah, there are different... Like, Godzilla Minus One's definitely very different from this. No, definitely different. Uh, but does the general audience know that? They just hear Godzilla and think, oh, it's all the same, you know? General audience, it's, it's hard to say. I mean, I don't know. They certainly follow I mean, complex stories with the superhero stories because right. that can get pretty complex. And so, well, yeah, I mean, like I, I've tried to explain the multiverse and superhero stuff to you before, and you're just like, "Oh, nothing matters really there and stuff." And like, there's three different actors playing Spider-Man all at once. Like, can you differentiate between the franchise? Actually, four, including the voice actor. But that's pretty think? much wraps up our uh, video review, the spoiler review. Um, is this a day one see for you guys, Musties? Are you? Uh, gonna hold out on this do you still have hope for the monster verse um i i was really prepared for an all-out just mindless fun and it seemed like the movie was aware of that and pushed me beyond my limits <laughs> so. i gotta say i wasn't disappointed i had a good time but you know you do have some uh, things that could improve in the future and we'll see where that happens all right monsies thanks for watching take care